Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you all very much for being here. My name is Josh Wolfenden, and I have the privilege of serving as the principal here at Richard O. Jacobson Technical High School. Um, it's a great campus. We have seven different career technical education programs, and there's something for everybody here. Um, our students graduate not only with their high school diploma, but also with uh, industry certifications that will lead to uh, a career path and uh, a very successful career in the field of their choice. So we're excited about the work that we do here, and it's just an awesome, awesome school. And uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to uh, find out more about it, please visit our website or come and talk to us sometime. We'd love to show you around. Uh, tonight, we are here to welcome Mr. Hendrick, our school superintendent, and he is going to uh, present to you on student acceleration focus. So without any further ado, Mr. Hendrick. Thank you, Mr. Wolfenden, and welcome to all those that are here and those that are also with us online. Uh, this is the fifth uh, Listen and Learn session that we've conducted so far with members of the public. I'm excited to share some information with you tonight uh, about uh, our school district, in particular, as Mr. Wolfenden mentioned, with a focus on acceleration. So this evening, uh, we're going to have you uh, listen to a brief presentation. It'll take about 20 minutes, and then the remainder of the evening will be focused on giving us feedback. You see lots of posters up on the wall. I'll talk about those and the ways in which we'll garner feedback a little bit later, uh, and then also have an opportunity to talk with district staff who are also here uh, to support the work this evening and to get feedback from the folks both here in person and online. We'll use our district strategic plan as a roadmap, and I'll touch on that tonight. Uh, with lots of areas for feedback really on anything in our school district. So whether it's something that is specific about tonight's presentation or just anything in general, we look forward to that feedback. Your experience and your thoughts are, are why we're here. And as we've done this now uh, in five different locations around the district, we've had uh, sessions where we've gotten feedback from parents, from community members, our arts organizations, uh, really folks from the, the southernmost part to the northernmost part of our district. And we look forward to being here tonight in, seminal to get your feedback as well. But first, a little bit about our district before the feedback. Uh, we are Pinellas County's largest employer with over 13,000 employees in our school district, the majority of which are teachers, and then support staff that makes up our school district. We have a seven-member elected school board. You can see those members there. Uh, two were just recently re-elected, and we'll have two members who will be leaving the board uh, by their own choice and two new members joining us in November. We have uh, over 128 schools in our district, not over, but 128 schools, uh, three adult education centers, two technical colleges, 20 charter schools, which make up nearly 100,000 age three, all the way through our oldest students in our technical colleges. As a district, uh, we rely on our mission and vision and core values to guide our work. And one of the things you'll see continuously tonight as you take a look at the feedback and the places you can give that feedback is a focus on the things that we say we're going to do. Our mission of educating and preparing each student for college, career, and life. And in particular, at this school, it's one of the things you heard Mr. Wolfenden touch on, is that mission of not only the education side, but how do we prepare students for life after high school? And that is indeed part of the focus this evening. So I mentioned our district strategic plan. Uh, it has 161 goals in it. And that strategic plan really focuses on everything that we do from achievement to our operations, our finances, uh, our culture and climate, and everything in between. So this evening, our goal is not to give you all 161 goals, but to give you the opportunity to provide feedback in some of those big areas. So you'll see those student achievement, a culture that promotes learning, uh, uh, career and college readiness, some of those themes, and I'll touch on some of them in a little bit. But to start, I really want to hit some points of pride for our school district. Um, and there's a number of folks' names that you'll see uh, listed there as statewide winners of, of different competitions across our state or folks that have made the finals for statewide, including Sarah Painter, who was the 2022 Florida Teacher of the Year. She, after spending a year all across the state promoting the teaching profession, she's back at Eisenhower Elementary uh, as a teacher in our district. Mr. Edward Wallace, who is our head plan operator at Lakewood Elementary School, was one of five finalists for the Florida School Related Employee of the Year. So really, when you look at our 13,000 employees, those are our two big categories. We have the support staff side and the teaching side. And we're fortunate in the last year to have had folks recognized as top five finalists 
in both categories at the state level with one winner. You'll see a number of other folks there, and I'm going to mention just a couple. Josh Roberson, who teaches across the street, was the 2022 Florida History Day Teacher of the Year. And one of our school resource officers, she was here tonight, uh, Barbara Bauer, was recognized with a Lifetime Achievement Award. You'll see several others there in terms of employee pride. As it relates to our theme tonight of acceleration, I want to hit a couple of things uh, that we try to really strive and push all of our students to have access to. We do a lot of work with preparing students for the ACT and SAT, and whether we like it or not, colleges focus heavy on the SAT and the ACT in terms of entrance requirements. We had a couple of students last year that earned perfect scores, which is amazing, but more importantly is the elevating excellence work that you see at the bottom. That's our commitment as a school district that we launched in 2018 to give every single student the type of college counseling that you would get at the most elite private school that you could find. And we build it around these ideas here that you see, these bullets listed, including that college entrance test prep. We do some of it in our school during the day. We do some of it in our summertime programming through uh, collaborative experiences where students can get together across different schools. Tonight we'll talk about uh, advanced coursework, and you can see a little graphic up there. Last year, again, our students completed over 20,000 college courses during the school day in our schools. So those are advanced placement courses, uh, international baccalaureate, our Cambridge ACE, and mostly uh, dual enrollment courses through Pinellas, uh, or through St. Petersburg College, and then dual enrollment through Pinellas Technical College. In total, that saved parents $12.5 million in tuition by completing college courses during the school day in lieu of having to first time take those uh, in college. And a graph or a number that's not up here, but one that is certainly a point of pride, last year in our senior class, we had 787 students, 787, that's over 10% of our graduating seniors, who graduated with either an AA degree, so they completed their full 60 hours from St. Petersburg College, or an IB, ACE, or AP capstone diploma. And so in either case, those are all students going into college in their junior years or close to their junior years. That's remarkable. 787 students left Pinellas County Schools last year with that accelerated opportunity. And so tonight, as we uh, seek some of that feedback, one of the areas we'll be looking at is that accelerated work that we do in high schools and how are we doing. A second area of pride in excel in when it comes to acceleration is our gifted services. So as a school district, about five years ago, we began doing what's called universal screening so that every single first grader in our district at the end of their first grade year is screened on a gifted test. And so we give that initial gifted screener to look for gifted and talented uh, tendencies based on the national model. And then as needed, students who score on that follow up with an IQ test from one of our school psychologists. That just general screening across the district has led to a dramatic increase in the number of students earning gifted or accessing gifted services. Prior to that, our gifted screening uh, that was in place was by nomination or by parents who would uh, go out and seek that privately. And then there were some opportunities for us to do some, some universal screening, but never to the extent that we've done it now. You can see we have full-time gifted service centers at, uh, in the south, mid, and north parts of our county in elementary and middle schools. We also have uh, gifted teachers in every single one of our elementary and middle schools where students can receive those services in their home zone school. In our high schools, those gifted services typically transition into the IB, AP, Cambridge, ACE, dual enrollment courses that I mentioned earlier. We've also, through a, a national grant for the Jacob K. Javits Foundation, expanded what's called talent development program. So those are students who did not qualify for gifted services but still scored very high on the screener and we want to push them to further acceleration because their data shows that. And so that talent development program in, in K through five has really taken off the last really three years and has produced amazing results. And so tonight we, we value your feedback on any of our gifted programs in our district. In middle school, uh, kind of the typical acceleration that you might be familiar with outside of some of those that I just mentioned, advanced and honors courses at every one of our middle schools, AVID programs at every one of our middle schools to help support students who are taking honors and advanced courses for the first time, accelerated courses that lead to high school credit, uh, for example, Algebra 1, but we have it in English, we have it in Science, we have it in Social Studies, even in Art now, we have pre-AP classes that give you high school credit, of course, world languages and a few others as well. 
In high school, again, the, the sort of typical honors and advanced courses, but then all of those college ones that I mentioned earlier, advanced placement, Cambridge, ACE, college and career technical dual enrollment at all of our high schools, and then IB programs at three of our high schools. This last year, 51% of Pinellas County School students who took the AP exam earned college credit. And our goal in AP courses is not just to get the college credit, that is important, but it's the content that you learn in preparation for college that is equally as important. I can't tell you how many students have come back and said, you know, I got a two on that AP calculus exam, but when I took it in college, I got an easy A, because I was so well prepared based on what I had in high school. So it's those points of pride in the accelerated areas that we seek your feedback on tonight and discussion as we move forward in the program. So connected to those district strategic plan goals, acceleration is a part of that. Um, and so that idea of acceleration through the student experience is something we're really pushing for this school year. So one of the areas we'll seek your feedback on tonight is what does that student experience look like for children in our school district? For all the reasons we can all cite the last couple of years, there were reasons why we didn't have experiences perhaps that we wanted to. We had fewer field trips, fewer volunteers in our schools. Students initially two years ago weren't working collaboratively to the extent that we would want to see. And we all know the reasons why. But this year we've challenged all of our schools to really focus on the student experience. What does that look like in our classrooms that motivates students beyond what you would typically see? Because we've gotten, as a society, so good at doing things online, we don't want our teachers to focus on the online part of their, or their teaching. We want them focusing on the hands-on experience for students. We don't need teachers who can just, or students who are just able to learn things through the computer. If that's the case, why do they need to come to see us every day? What is that experience that is so valuable when they get there that they couldn't get behind a computer? Whether it's debate and content discussions, maybe it's something in the arts, maybe it's a career technical program like you see here. Whatever that is, that student experience is something we've been pushing, and you see some examples of some innovative programs in our district that we've started with. Uh, but tonight, we have some opportunities for you to give us some feedback on what does the student experience look like in our school district. Another area of our district strategic plan is on closing achievement gaps. We have a very well-documented bridging the gap plan that's now in its sixth year to close achievement gaps between black and non-black students in our district that our board has approved. But there are a lot of areas to close gaps in terms of student learning. There's certainly a literacy gap between boys and girls in the state of Florida. Girls read at a, typically a 10% higher proficiency rate than boys. And one of the things we've done in our district in the elementary school is really push opportunities for boys to get more excited about reading. And we do a, a battle of the books just for boys with a focus on specific areas of literacy that motivate young, uh, young students who maybe aren't as excited as their uh, peer females. You can see some other examples up there of where we're trying to close literacy gaps early on, starting in really pre-K. Uh, reading recovery is a first grade initiative. Gaps are really easy to close when you do so earlier in a student's career as opposed to trying to do it in middle school or high school. And so tonight, one of the areas you can give feedback on is how are we doing in closing some of those gaps. The next area for feedback is on college and career preparation. How are we doing getting all students prepared for college and careers? This year, we're launching uh, our college and career centers at all 17 of our high schools. We started this through a partnership with the Pinellas Education Foundation four years ago at one high school and then expanded it to five high schools and now this year to all 17. And the design is, is that every single high school has a dedicated space for college and career counseling with an employee whose full-time job is to do that work. And so that includes helping students with college applications, helping them apply for financial aid, helping them do uh, the, the written part of the application, helping them with uh, all of the pieces that go into that, including school tours, uh, NCAA student athlete workshops, and everything in between. Some of that's done district wide, a lot of it's done locally at the, at the local school. And so tonight, you give us feedback on those opportunities as well. The next area for feedback is cultivating a culture of learning in a rewarding, healthy, and safe environment. Certainly school safety over the last five years has taken the front seat as it should in the state of Florida. And in Pinellas, uh, with our sheriff, Sheriff Gultieri, being the head of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission, we have always been on the front end of trying to keep our schools and our students and our staff as safe as possible. But it's, school safety is not just about the walls and the, the gates 
uh, and making sure that folks are checked in when they come in, it's about the climate in our schools. It's about students and staff feeling safe when something's not right to speak up immediately. And so whether it's suicide prevention or helping families struggle or whether it's helping uh, students report bullying, whatever that is, we have to have a culture that promotes that safe and healthy environment. And so you'll see some of that tonight, an opportunity for feedback. But as I mentioned, it's not just about the obvious things. It's also about promoting a culture that people want to be here, that students feel safe and excited to come to school. And that includes our employees. And so this year, we've begun an employee recognition program uh, that leads with our core values. And we've started uh, off to a good start here this school year. The next opportunity or for feedback is called Endless Opportunities through Pinellas County Schools. And it really focuses on the different things that we offer as a school district that are beyond sort of the standardized, which you would think of the zone high school with, with, or middle school or elementary school with no other programs. And so you see all of our choice programs, uh, including this particular school as one, some of the new programs that we've offered, our magnet programs. But also in our zone schools, what are those clubs and activities and enrichment pieces that excite students and bring them uh, some opportunities that are different and unique. That includes our facilities. As a school district, we have continued to embark on a, a reimagining of our facilities. We have very few new schools that are built, but we're in the process of updating many of our schools uh, that perhaps are as much as 100 years old. And so this building here is relatively new, uh, about six years old now, but there's lots of facilities that need to be improved. Seminole High School across the street is up for a major renovation here in the next couple of years as part of our five-year capital outlay plan. So you can give us some feedback on how we're doing there with facilities as well. And then the last area of sort of general feedback that we've been asking at all of these Listen and Learns is how we're deploying our resources. We are uh, the benefactor, as are all public school districts and other uh, government agencies, the benefactor of one-time state and federal funding resources, and we're trying to put those to use for their intended purposes. So whether that's tutoring programs, safe and healthy protocols, whatever that might be, how are we doing on implementing those and making sure that we're transparent and spending the dollars in the manner in which they were prescribed. So tonight, you're going to see lots of posters around this room, and it's going to be a little overwhelming. And I want to warn you, you don't have to give feedback on all the posters, all right? Uh, but I want to kind of point your direction to a couple of them, uh, if I may. So if you'll take a look over here to my right, your left, uh, over on the classroom door over there, you're going to see uh, kind of a, a line with three little bullets on it. And those, you're going to see those throughout this room. And that's just a Likert scale to rate how we're doing on a particular uh, item or program from either very unsatisfied to very satisfied or somewhere in the middle. And, and a, lot, a lot of the ones in the middle are unsure. So this side of the room, to my right, your left, is really focused on all those accelerated pieces that I started talking about earlier tonight. So how are we doing in our gifted programs? How are we doing in our advanced placement? Preparing students for college and careers in the school day programs. How are we doing with our partnerships with universities and colleges? So that's kind of the entire side of the room over here. And so on the ones with the dots, uh, with the line with the dots, you'll take a, a dot, that'll, a sticker, that you'll see at the tables nearby, and you just simply rate. So you take a dot off, you put it up there for the ones that you're familiar with or would like to give us feedback and rate. Then you'll see some that are just sort of a box, like you see over there on the door on the right, and that's an opportunity to write written feedback on a sticky note. So there's sticky notes there, post-it notes that you can write that written feedback on and give a specific feedback on that area. So you're going to see that all there for acceleration. These uh, in the back and on the side are the ones on our district strategic plan, our district climate, uh, and then in the back are the student experiences. So how are we doing with the student experience? Because there's so many that you'll see here tonight with this theme of acceleration, we certainly don't ex um, expect that you have to fill out every single one, but you're welcome to. We'd love your feedback in every single area or just the ones that might interest you. So the student experience part that you'll see in the back, what a student does in the classroom is what we're looking for. The opportunities a student has to enrich themselves in the classroom and accelerate their learning. And then as I mentioned, those extracurricular experiences that build a sense of belonging in their particular interest. Um, this feedback session tonight uh, includes both folks here in person, but also we're video because we have folks at home listening in. And those that are at home, you'll have an opportunity using the link in the YouTube channel to give the same feedback uh, just virtually online. So as you give that feedback, there's a number of members from the district staff that are here 
to answer questions and to hear your input and feedback as well. So those district folks that are in the back, if you don't mind just standing up real quick and you'll see them. Uh, they're everybody from our specialist around gifted and talented work, our career technical specialist, uh, some of our area superintendents, and folks in between that will help kind of solicit that feedback, and, and they'll be stationed around the room. And because part of the, the purpose of tonight is for folks to be able to interact. And so as soon as I'm done, I'll be here as well, and any of the folks that are here can certainly come up and share your feedback and interest with me as well. And so with that... Um, I'm going to have us break in just a moment to give that feedback, but here's the best part of these listen and learn sessions is that you are not trapped for the rest of the night. Um, there is no final uh, comeback and, and closing statement, so you don't have to stay the rest of the evening. You give your feedback, you talk to all the people that you'd like to talk to, and then when you're finished, you're welcome to go home and, and be on about the rest of your day. So I'm going to thank the folks that are here from Richard uh, o. Jacobson Technical High School. I know there are some families and staff members here. I see a number of folks from other schools. Thank you for being here. I look forward to talking with you tonight, as does our district staff. And at this point, we'll release you to give feedback on the posters and individually in person. Thank you very much.